Well, good evening, everybody. As you know, I've got a nice little train laying out here. Um, it was originally all 1981 Hornby stuff, apart from a couple of Oxford die cast, uh, what were they called? Mechanical horses. Anyway, I've since um, been a bit busy. I bought four more Oxford die cast things, a couple of CMP pattern trucks, a Jeep, and a Bofors gun. Now, why is there a Bofors gun? If you've been watching any of my non-train videos, you may have spotted that there's a bit of an interest in anti-aircraft from the Second World War. Okay, down to my grandfather being an anti-aircraft gunner. Now he was on heavy AA guns, so the Bofors wouldn't count. However, what I've done is I've added to my train set, and I think you might like having a look, guys and girls. Well, most of you are already familiar with the level crossing and the goods yard behind with the little mini truck station my two mechanical horses from the Great Western Railway. Now, this is where things have changed. This is the Oxford Diecast 40 millimeter Bofors anti-aircraft gun. It's on the traveling mount, okay, so it's not a fixed position. Basically, I've put that in situ. I've made the crates on my resin printer. I made the sandbag emplacement on my resin printer. Put it in place and it's got the earth and grass obviously embankment around it as you can see the the, the torch is picking up but the glue is still wet now my grandfather wasn't on the 40 mils he was he was this was light anti aircraft he was on the heavy anti aircraft guns now if we come over to the central portion okay i have instead of just having an area of trees built although the scale is not quite right, a heavy anti-aircraft battery emplacement, four gun position. Now, what we have here, resin printed, 3.7 inch, Vickers QF heavy anti-aircraft gun. This is what he was on. This is the Mark II static mounting. This would be in a fixed position, okay? Parts of the wall that might be you know with the sandbags and the uh, wooden revetments behind it okay later on there was concrete bunkers but these actually wouldn't fit in there the scale would just be totally wrong so i can't actually manage to do that so i've had to go with that so i've, I've printed all these these little crates and so on ammunition crates there's still a little bit to go on there there's a, a stack of more ammunition there okay added a couple of oxide die cast cmp military artillery tractors which i've got photographs of my grandfather next to and uh, printed off three bell tents for the crew and i've got the oxford die cast jeep now i've got a picture of my grandfather with one of these with the roundel on the front now i also had to manufacture myself something okay this here bunker this command bunker mirrors the one that I found on Orkney at Risa Bay where he uh, was stationed for a year. Now this here, this is the um, height finder enclosure and this is the predictor enclosure. Now until somebody designs a predictor or a height finder to fit, I'm a bit stuck. Oh, there goes my power controller. If we have a quick look here, we can go closer in on that bunker and command setup. There you go. So I made that bunker. Look at that. All printed in resin from my photos and videos. And then we have a four gun battery. So that's what I've been up to. Oh, one last thing. Printed a pillbox as well and put that in position. Looking down that line and looking up that line. So, yeah, pretty good. I've warified, sort of, my layout. So, let's just add a little bit of movement to this because you want to see some trains going around. So, let's start off. I've got my Black 5 and the GWR coaches. And my LDS CGT, the little freight wagon. 